good morning and welcome to Bournemouth University for this symposium. It is a privilege and a pleasure to welcome such a distinguished group of speakers. We are delighted to host this event, which brings policymakers, stakeholders, social scientists and lawyers together to discuss what constitutes evidence for copyright. So above all, what do we want evidence for? What do we want to do with evidence? So if you ask that policy question, what kind of evidence would bear on that point? So what is evidence for copyright policy? I think one of the important things to make is that evidence doesn't always mean economics. I think it's really, really important to recognise not to set the bar too high when we're trying to gather evidence. It's easy to look at the IPO principles and say that's, that's a really good start. When we come to the question of what evidence, I've always felt that it is a mixture of legal, economic, case history. Evidence should be factual, evidence should be clear, evidence clearly should be uh, transparent. When the whole world is rocking around you, what you ask for is some evidence. Evidence. I also believe that anecdotal and, uh, and qualitative evidence should and has a has a strong role to play. Sometimes we have too much data and we have to look and test for various influences. Sometimes we have too little data. So what is good evidence? And I'll show my bias as an economist and say it's quantitative. What is the advantage of testing hypotheses using experiments? There's also evidence that people download more music when they're younger than when they're older. I am very sceptical about anecdotal evidence. Our question today, right, discreetly, is what constitutes evidence for for copyright policy. What constitutes evidence for copyright policy?